Hey guys, this YouTube channel is not to get your pronouns right. If you're offended by my message, you're using the wrong fact checker. I'm not a rainbow farting unicorn. I'm nature's advocate. This is Lucia and the News with Beatrice Villiers. Hi guys, I see we made the front page of this Land Observer. Very well balanced article. I want to thank the authors for the in-depth dive they gave into the problem. Just want to fact check with them something quickly. The Velazi River has never been the main water supply to St. Lucia estuary system. Actually, it's the ocean. The ocean supplies is the main water supply to an estuary. That's why it's called an estuary. It's a marine system. It needs the ocean to be a marine system. Sorry about that, guys, but I had to point that out to you. Then I read in the article, but that is a, a public narrative that's been spun for many, many years by a leading scientist that was running the 2012 management plan and the 2014 and 2017 Global Environmental Fund plan. And that is the narrative that St. Dredging and the opening of the Infelosi River may have starved St. Lucia system of fresh water. That is scientifically incorrect. That is a false narrative. And people that want to use the NEMA Act against me, um, please, it's time that we get this into court so that we can get behind the facts. Uh, that's why I made the videos that in the on this channel says the first 21 kilometers and the back channel and all that. Um, there's a scientific paper published, I found it yesterday, last night, on ResearchGate, dated 2011. That explains the back channel and the levees and how the levees can be upgraded to incorporate the farmers and to mitigate the impact on the farmers. Now that was in 2011, published in 2011. And it references Dr. Tiki Forbes as one of the, the people. <laughs> So, um, Dr. Tiki Forbes knows about this paper. So, he knows about the back channel and the feeding of the Velozi River into the system through the back channel. The sediment traps that was developed over the years. Now, I'm talking about 1938 to 1945, 1945 to 1968, 1968 to 1977, 1977 to 1999. Those are the years that this... We're referring to so in none of those years you will find that the estuary system the lake system was ever starved of the flowsy fresh water that is scientifically incorrect what actually happened is that during high energy floods they take them flowsy directly into the ocean basically i did deduct it through common sense for two reasons. One, so that the farmers are not flooded. Two, to get the heavy sediment into the ocean so it doesn't flood the wetlands, the low-lying wetlands, the sensitive, fragile ecosystems that's been flooded right now. But during low energy flows, it was redirected through the back channels, through the sediment traps, delivering clean water into the Greater St. Lucia system. So let's just put that right. I know that there's a lot of scientists that believe the hogwash, that the estuary was starved because of the two mouths. That is not actually what happened. And these scientific papers, probably after 2011 as well, but definitely from 1942 to 1968, there's a lot of scientific papers about that. Thank you. One other fact that I want to check with Tony Carney 
This is in this article about the um, spore at Ulindi or close to Ulindi at one of the anthracite mines is that um, it says where the it spilled into the Infolosi and the Infolosi runs into the ocean at St. Lucia Estuary. That doesn't, that stopped happening 4th of July 2021, Tony, sorry. So um, that whole spillage is going straight into the sensitive wetlands area. Um, your article that you wrote about the Umrudi and the bulldozers and the forced interaction and I don't know what you called it. That's the reason why it's going straight into the wetlands and not to the ocean. Okay, just just an update there for you. Lastly but not least is the unfortunate incident that happened uh, Sunday midday where the elephant overturned the vehicle, two adults, two children. Um, a lot of people say that the elephants was provoked and people should have run away. This is not how they teach us when they teach us to deal with animals. They say by running away you're teaching the animal to charge. Just to uh, bring that under everybody's attention. The park has now sent out a circular that says you one has to stay at least 50 meters away from the elephants it's not always possible um, somehow they sneak up on you or you sneak up on them either way you land up and with a confrontational difference from these animals the sad thing about these animals is they're all orphans and we know from early studies that orphan bulls that grew up without a a patriarch uh, to push them out of must when they come into most early becomes problem animals now I don't say this bull is a problem animal I'm just saying think about all the raging hormones that is going through this these animals or this whole herd is unpredictable it's not only the bull they are now trapped on the wetlands since the last rainstorm which was what November last year they actually stayed on the western shores most of their life. They're now trapped in a wetland system where the water level raises daily. They come from Shushlui, where the ancestral elf um, herd is dry, grew up on dry savanna land. Think about that. Think how these animals, how unstable they must be. They are the most emotionally damaged animals on the planet they orphaned because of culling that went wrong so um, the problem is deeper than just not keeping your distance or making a noise or making the wrong move it's deeply deeply seated and I will faithful to my cause will contribute this to the animals being stuck at the wrong side of the lake while the flood levels are rising guys thanks for watching please like share and subscribe it will help the channel to grow so that we can make better longer more interesting videos thank you goodbye